The Denver Broncos are doing what every single girl I had a crush on in high school are doing, and it's brilliant, but it's infuriating if you're on the other end of it. We're going to break that down. Uh, trade targets that we might make a move on. We get advanced analytics that make me feel like Bo is him. Uh, and our biggest position of need coming into this season ends up being the AFC Defensive Player of the Week last week, and we have so much more great news to break down in this video. If you're new to this channel, my name is Ben, and it helps me out a ton if you would like and subscribe, especially because this is my one-year anniversary on YouTube. This is the, the day 365 days ago that I started up the YouTube journey, and I love that you all have been here uh, along the way. Massive shout-out to all y'all who've been watching for however long you've been watching for. So before we dive into the true news of the day, we got to hit you with this deep New York Times journalism here. Love that, you know, amidst an election and all that, they're doing the work that we really care about. And they dug up some real hard truth. And that is that the average NFL team eats between 3,600 and 4,300 Uncrustables per day. Mike Kliss did all of the number crunching and that averages out to nine Uncrustables per day per player on the Denver Broncos. And my question for y'all is how many Uncrustables could you eat in one sitting before getting absolutely sick to your stomach if this video on my anniversary gets to, we'll say, 500 likes? That'd be an ambitious goal. Um, I will eat 9.3 Uncrustables in our post-game breakdown of the Carolina Panthers. So, um, yeah, like it, and we'll see what happens there. All right, so looking here at, at what the Denver Broncos are doing, trade deadline, we're talking 13 days away at this point. And we all are like, hey, Broncos, make a move, make a move. Go get Ninjoku. No, go get Cooper Cup if we could get him for a third. Uh, let's move on. For, let's sell Zach Wilson. We don't need him anymore. Let's sell Jared Sidham anymore. Well, Sean Payton compared this actually to homecoming. And he said, like, right now, people are just doing their feelers. So you're taking calls like, oh, we'd sell him for this or we'd, we'd buy him for this. But I think Sean Payton and the rest of the Denver media completely agrees with this wants to see how this week pans out. Like if the Denver Broncos go out and they just throttle the Carolina Panthers like they should, we start seeing signs from this offense like, hey, this offense is here to stay. Uh, we're taking care of business and we're two games over 500. I think the Denver Broncos make a move. If we barely squeak one out over the Carolina Panthers or all these other teams we're going to be jockeying with for AFC playoff contention also are winning in, in very – dominant fashion like if all of a sudden it looks like the Cincinnati Bengals or the Colts have rounded a corner and are going to make the playoffs and make that harder for us you could see the Broncos like punting on a trade I think at this point in time that our biggest area of need is clearly getting another playmaker for Bo Nix and if that could be a tight end who could come in and step into day one and make a difference I think that is a better move than punting till next year because even if we draft a stud tight end very few tight ends come into the league ready to hit the ground running. Uh, and the ones that do, like everyone knows their names, like a, a Brock Bowers, like a Laporta, um, like that, yeah, the cat from the Lions. And it, it's a position that takes a lot of time to learn because you're learning both being an offensive lineman in running downs and being a receiver. Uh, and so I think a, a tight end, even if we got one next year for Bo, he's not going to be ready to be a great tight end until the year after. So if we could get Njoku for a third round draft pick and we dominate the Carolina Panthers like we should on Sunday, I think we will see that move happen next week. You could also see a world where like there's signs of life with the Cleveland Browns and they dominate with Jameis Winston taking the reins. And then the Browns are like, well, maybe we'll try for the playoffs this year with Jameis. Uh, and then they might want to hang on to him. But that's going to be interesting to see how all of that pans out. Other great news that we've been seeing coming out throughout this week is that coming into this offseason, I said the big things that we had to watch out for and the big unknowns were what was going to happen now that Josie Jewell had left the Denver Broncos inside linebacker core. Like he and Singleton dominated. If you told me at the start of the year that we'd lose Singleton for the year, I'd be like, oh my goodness, we're going to struggle on defense. And you've seen our biggest position of need win the best defensive player in the entire AFC last week. And so huge shout out to Cody Barton on getting this award. Uh, all the hate that you got from Seattle fans and, and from people saying you were cooked and weren't fit for the job, you have proved them wrong without a, a shadow of a doubt. And so that's great that as we looked yesterday, the Broncos have the best offensive line for protecting Bo Nix. We have the best defensive line for getting to the quarterback. We've already shown that we have the best cornerbacks in the league. Like, that's a cold, hard fact. Like, they were just ranked number one and two, the, the number one tandem with Riley Moss and Pat Sertan. 
So then if like your only weakness on your defense is also the best player in the AFC for defense, like that's phenomenal and exciting. Um, so here are some of those stats just about how good our defensive front is that you see Zach Allen beating every single other defensive lineman uh, for getting sna- uh, pressure on the quarterback. He told you in the offseason that this was going to happen. He said, Vance Joseph, has we all get the system now, and we know that we make our first move upfield. We don't read and react. We just react. We go right in. Um, and so you see kind of the fruition of staying with um, – a staying with a system over time and not kicking Vance Joseph to the curb. Uh, this was the thing I, I mentioned here that when you look at the the best corners in the league, you're not just talking like, hey, we got a couple guys in the top five. No, we have two guys who are ranked number two. And the cool part about seeing Riley Moss be the second ranked best defensive back in the league is that he was playing defensive back one for the past uh, two games, essentially. So it's not like he's just been on garbage wide receivers that he played quarterback one for that entire game against the chargers. And then he had to play in Pat Sertan's stead last week. And so this is just phenomenal news that really when you're saying like the Broncos have a chance at the playoffs, when you have the best offensive line, best defensive line and best cornerback room, and then your area of weakness ends up being the AFC, AFC defensive player of the week. Watch out you guys. Cause this is just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, you hear uh, Quinn Miners talk about like all this kind of change has happened because of consistency throughout time. And so, at, you know, I would love nothing more than the Raiders to just burn down to the ground. But as they're already talking about moving on from their first year head coach, or you hear the same thing with the Patriots, I would tell them that is not the recipe for success that it change over time happens when you have a court, a coach who's enabled to get his system cooking. And so I love that we didn't give up on Vance, and I love that Sean Payton has this runway to develop. And you hear Quinn Minerts come out and say, the big difference is we know the structure, we know how to play, um, and so all we got to do is play because we get it and we're not thinking anymore, we're just doing, and that's phenomenal. Um, Getting great news here out of Cortland Sutton and just seeing him react to the fact that he wasn't targeted. We did a video right after the zero target game against the Saints, and it turns out he was pulling dudes off the pile and he was clapping everyone in, and he came out and made me feel even stronger that I want to hang on to him because of how he responded to They were like, hey, man, you didn't get any targets. That's kind of sucky for a wide receiver one. I'm telling you, every other wide receiver one in the league would have been like, yeah, I was just getting a lot of cardio or yeah, you got to get me targets. I want to eat. They'd put, you know, the pickens put like uh, always open on his um on his nose black on it that he wore for the game and got fined by the league. And you just see Sh- Cortland Sutton come out and be like, uh, all we we won. And that's literally all I care about. We won. That's all that matters at the end of the day. Our O-line blocked its butts off, and I think it was all hands on deck. So I love that we got a team-first dude in the most me-first position in the entire NFL, and that is absolutely uh, phenomenal. Some rumors coming out as we are in that feeling out stage, and Sean Payton talked about this, that we have people calling us, and we're calling people about who to trade. And I think this is going to be the thing to keep an eye on. Bo Nix has proved that he is our franchise quarterback and we are, are running him into the ground and figuring out like, can we win with you? And if not, we need to draft somebody else. He's our franchise quarterback. It's not Jarrett Stidham and it's not Zach Wilson. And so ESPN is predicting that the Broncos might actually be sellers at the deadline moving on from either Zach Wilson or Jarrett Stidham. Now, the thing to keep in mind as we're watching this is that Um, There's these things in the NFL called compensatory picks. And basically, if you lose talent from your team and they go sign on with another team, the NFL does this calculation to see like they try to keep things even. And that's why there is such great um, parity of play across the league that no team is like running away with it uh, because there's like there's a lot of evenness. The NBA, it's like you got teams that will win 10 games and you'll have teams that it will hardly lose, right? And I love that about the NFL, that it's any given Sunday. One of the things that keeps that in place is compensatory picks. So if Zach Wilson or Jared Stidham go and sign a mega deal next year in free agency, then the Denver Broncos might actually end up with like a up to a third round draft pick as a compensatory pick. And when you look at, we got Cooper, Barrett Browning, Garrett Bowles, all who could go get big deals other places. And so the Broncos need to weigh you know, if somebody's only offering you a seventh round draft pick for 
Zach Wilson. Well, we'll probably get a third round draft pick if he goes and signs a mega huge deal with Miami to back up to a next year or signs a mega deal with the Green Bay Packers. And so I would just hate to see us send him off for some, you know, less than a fourth round draft pick because we'd get a third round in compensatory pick for him if he goes and signs a deal somewhere else. But something to definitely keep an eye on. Uh, and all of this change and why it's happening is because Sean Payton has stamped a culture all over this team. And that is the thing that the haters are finally starting to see is that this winning culture is legit and the Broncos are going to prove it this Sunday. Jonathan, uh, yeah, Jonathan Cooper came out today and was just talking about that very thing that like he's harder on himself than any coach is. That is the definition of culture. Like, do you hold yourself personally re- accountable or do you need a coach above you to do it? The great coaches have an ability to instill that intrinsic motivation. And I love Jonathan Cooper showing it. And that's why we have a platoon of edge rushers because we have a winning culture stamped from Sean Payton. And that's something that we all should bow leave in because we are making the playoffs. Uh, if you're still watching here, my one year anniversary. This is awesome. Huge shout out to my wife for letting me come down to the basement every night and taking care of the kids so I can do this. Huge shout out to like a lot of all y'all who've been there since like 200 subs. My mom, you've watched every video, my family. Uh, Thanks to all of you. This has been a wild ride and I cannot wait till it culminates with the Broncos being in the playoffs. Ah, I gotta make it. It's one year. There we go.